was a dark and stormy night, rain pouring relentlessly from the heavens. I found myself driving alone on a deserted stretch of road, my knuckles gripping the steering wheel tightly as I tried to navigate through the deluge. The rain pounded against the car, creating a deafening symphony of water droplets. As I pressed on, hoping to reach my friend's cabin soon, my car suddenly jerked and shuddered before coming to a complete stop. Panic washed over me as I realized that I was stranded in the middle of nowhere. I glanced at my phone, only to find that I had no signal. With a heavy sigh, I decided to assess the situation. I stepped out of the car, rain soaking me to the bone, and popped open the hood. A quick examination revealed nothing obvious, and my limited mechanical knowledge left me feeling helpless. As I stood there, reflecting on my life decisions, the sound of an approaching engine caught my attention. Relief washed over me as headlights emerged from the darkness. Another vehicle pulled up beside me, and a concerned stranger stepped out, offering assistance. Grateful for the help, I eagerly accepted. The stranger, a middle-aged man with a kind smile, took a look at the engine and suggested a few possible issues. Together, we attempted some basic troubleshooting, but it became clear that we had no idea on what was wrong. The man offered to give me a lift to the nearest town where I could find a mechanic or get help. Thankful for his generosity, I hopped into his car, trusting him blindly. We drove along the rain-soaked roads, engaging in light conversation as we went. Then, out of the corner of my eye, I noticed a glint of metal, a knife tucked discreetly between the seats. My heart skipped a beat as I realized the horrifying truth. I took a cautious look around the car. I saw bloodstains in the back seat, and in the door pocket I saw a news article about a local murder that happened a few months ago. The man who had stopped to help me was not who he appeared to be. Panic surged through me as I desperately tried to come up with a plan. I knew I had to remain calm and find an opportunity to escape. I kept up a facade of gratitude while my mind raced. Finally, as we approached a lone gas station deep in the woods, I saw my chance. Pretending to need the restroom, I asked the man to stop. The man hesitated, but he eventually parked the car, and as soon as the doors opened, I bolted, sprinting towards the illuminated haven of the gas station. I burst through the doors, breathless and drenched, frantically explaining the situation to the startled patrons and gas station attendant. They sprang into action, alerting the authorities and providing me with shelter until help arrived. Hours later, as the rain subsided, the tow truck pulled up to take my broken down car away. I will never forget that night. I could have been murdered. The engine let out a final cough, and then fell silent. I cursed under my breath as the car coasted to a halt on the dark, deserted road. The rain hammered against the windows, adding to the sense of isolation and unease that gripped our small group of friends. We had been on our way back from a weekend getaway, laughing and singing along to our favorite tunes. Now, with the car dead and no sign of civilization in sight, a wave of apprehension washed over us. Holy crap, guys. Mark exclaimed, his voice tinged with frustration. Of all the times for the car to break down, it had to be in the middle of nowhere, at night, in the pouring rain. We all exchanged worried glances. Sarah suggested checking the engine, hoping it was a minor issue we could fix ourselves. We grabbed flashlights and huddled under the hood. We were no mechanics, and our limited knowledge left us feeling helpless. The reality of our situation began to sink in. Suddenly we heard a faint sound carried by the wind. It was a distant whisper, almost imperceptible, but it sent a chill down our spines. We exchanged perplexed looks, unsure if we were imagining things. But as the whisper grew louder, transforming into an eerie, disembodied voice, there was no denying its existence. What the hell is that? Jenny exclaimed, her voice trembling. We strained our ears, trying to decipher the words that seemed to float on the air. It was a low, raspy voice, filled with a mix of anger and desperation. The words were incomprehensible, like a language from another realm. Fear gnawed at our insides as we realized we were not alone on that desolate road. The whispers seemed to come from all directions, surrounding us with an unseen presence. The hairs on the back of our necks stood on end. Maybe it's just the wind, Tim suggested, though his voice lacked conviction. But as we stood there, the whispers morphed into guttural growls, sending shivers down our spines. Panic surged through us, and our survival instincts kicked in. We abandoned any hope of fixing the car ourselves and decided to seek help, 
no matter how far we had to walk. Every rustle of leaves, every crack of a twig, sent our hearts racing. It felt like we were being watched, stalked by an unseen predator lurking just beyond our vision. After what seemed like an eternity, we stumbled upon a small, rundown house nestled in the woods. We knocked gently on the wooden door. The door slowly opened, revealing an old man with weary eyes. His face bore the marks of a life filled with hardship and solitude. We stumbled over our words, explaining our predicament, hoping he would lend us a helping hand. The old man's gaze shifted from one face to another, his expression a mix of curiosity and concern. He nodded slowly, as if he understood the horrors we had encountered. With a weathered hand, he motioned for us to enter, offering sanctuary from the encroaching darkness. As we gathered around a flickering fireplace, the old man spoke in a voice filled with wisdom. He told us tales of the haunted woods, of lost souls doomed to wander in the dead of night, their whispers reaching out to the living. We listened, captivated by his words, realizing that our ordeal was not a mere coincidence but a brush with the supernatural. I don't know if he was telling the truth, but from what I've experienced, I forced myself to believe him, even though I've never believed in ghosts or spirituality. The night wore on, and eventually, a tow truck arrived to rescue our stranded car, and we said our goodbyes to the old man. We are no longer a friend group, but we will share this horrifying story together for the rest of our life. The engine of my car hummed softly as I gripped the leather-wrapped steering wheel, my fingers tightening around it like a vice. The late hour cast a shroud of darkness over the desolate road ahead, and a cold sweat formed on my brow. I glanced at the clock, its red numbers flashing 2.47 a.m. The narrow asphalt ribboned its way through a dense forest, its trees standing tall and imposing on either side. Their skeletal branches reached out like gnarled fingers casting eerie shadows that danced menacingly in the beam of my headlights. The silence was deafening, broken only by the faint rustling of leaves and the constant humming of my engine. The air itself felt heavy, and I just wanted to get the hell out of the spooky woods as fast as possible. My gaze darted between the road ahead and the rearview mirror, paranoia gnawing at the edges of my consciousness. The thought that I was being watched loomed over me, its weight suffocating. I tried to dismiss it as a figment of my imagination, but as the minutes ticked by, the feeling grew stronger. A flicker of movement caught my eye in the mirror, and I quickly shifted my focus, my heart pounding against my ribcage. There, amidst the dense shadows, I glimpsed the silhouette of a figure. It appeared hunched and distorted, like a specter lurking just beyond the reach of my headlights. Panic surged through my veins, urging me to flee, to escape this nightmare. I pressed harder on the gas pedal, my foot sinking into the floorboard. The engine roared to life, propelling me forward with an urgent determination. My senses heightened, attuned to every creak and rustle in the night. The wind whispered secrets, carrying them through the trees, their voices an ethereal chorus that chilled me to the bone. Shadows danced at the periphery of my vision, darting and swaying with malevolence. I fought to keep my focus on the road, my knuckles turning white as I clutched the steering wheel my eyes darting anxiously between the rearview mirror and the sinister path that lay ahead. But fate had other plans for me. As I rounded a particularly treacherous curve, a figure materialized in the middle of the road. My heart lurched in my chest, and I slammed on the brakes, the tires screeching in protest. My car skidded to a halt, coming to rest just a few feet from the mysterious apparition. A chill crept up my spine as I stared at the figure before me. It stood motionless, bathed in the pale glow of my headlights. Its form was indistinct, as if shrouded in an impenetrable mist. My breath caught in my throat as I strained to make out its features, but darkness obscured them, leaving only a haunting silhouette. Fear mingled with curiosity as I rolled down my window, the night air biting at my cheeks. A gust of wind whispered through the trees, carrying with it a haunting melody that sent shivers down my spine. The figure remained unmoving, its presence oppressive. Summoning the last remnants of my courage, I called out, my voice wavering. Who are you? What do you want? A hollow silence filled the air, broken only by the sound of my racing heartbeat. Then, in a voice as cold as ice, the figure spoke, its words searing into my soul. I am the guardian of this forsaken road, it hissed, its voice dripping with malevolence. 
None shall pass without paying the price. Before my eyes, the figure dissolved into mist, dissipating into the night. Panic gripped me, and I fumbled for the ignition, desperate to escape this waking nightmare. The engine roared to life, and I peeled away from the spectral presence, the haunting whispers fading into the distance. But as I sped away, the memory of that encounter etched itself deep within my mind. Looking back, I am now sure that I must have hallucinated. It was so late and I was insanely tired. I can't think of any other explanation for what I saw that night.